Hello and welcome back to Offbeat Gyan. This video is on Anglo-Saxon poetry. I have talked about Beowulf, the greatest of the Anglo-Saxon poems in another video. There is a quiz also related to Beowulf, so if you are interested, please do watch those videos. This video is on Widsith, Dior's Lament, the Seafarer and Walder. Anglo-Saxon poetry was never written down. It had an oral tradition. So over a period of time, a lot of interpolation happened. What exactly is interpolation? Interpolation means when a particular song or a poem was transferred from one generation to the next generation, the poets added or tweaked, they added or deleted certain parts of the poem depending on their likes and dislikes. So, over a period of time, the poem underwent a lot of changes. Anglo-Saxon poets were called scop. And uh, these scops used to travel from one place to another with their songs. When we listen to Anglo-Saxon poetry, we may think of it as a very different, a very foreign sounding language. Because Old English words, they sound very different from the English words that we use today. But actually, they are the same words. The only difference is in the way in which they used to pronounce the English vowels. By they, I mean the people of the Anglo-Saxon period. Their pronunciation of the English vowels was very different from the way it is pronounced today by speakers of modern English. What were the literary devices used in Beowulf and the other poems of that period? Poems like Widsith and uh, the Seafarer. The literary devices which were used by most of the Anglo-Saxon poets were alliteration and accent. When two or more words in a line begin with the same letter or sound, then it is the use of alliteration. So there was no use of rhyme. But a musical effect was produced by giving each half line two strongly accented syllables. So, there were four accents in each line and three of them began with the same sound or letter. These songs or these poems were usually accompanied by the music of the harp. And the harp's music was used to heighten the effect of the words. So, the first important poem of this period, Vidsith. It is probably the oldest poem in English. We don't know anything about the poet who wrote this poem. But it describes the life of a poet. It describes the life of a minstrel or a travelling singer-poet who used to move from one place to another, sing his songs and that is how he used to earn his living, how he used to support himself. That means these travelling singers or poets, they used to move from one village to another village and wherever they found a welcoming audience, they would stay there, they would sing their songs and they would be paid in cash or kind and then they would move on to the next place. So, this particular poem, Widsith, it belongs to the period before the arrival of Saxons in England. And another fact that we get to know from this poem is that literature was a paid creative profession. But it was very low paying. It was not a highly paid professional profession. The next poem is Dior's Lament. And this poem is a complete contrast with Widsith. Because Widsith talks about a happy poet who travels from one place to another and he uh, lives on the money or the things that are given to him by his audience. Dior talks about a very unhappy and worried Saxon scop or poet. Dior is a poet whose survival depended on the pleasure of his chief. And he is not the only one. He talks about other people, other scops or Anglo-Saxon poets who had a far more difficult time than him. So, he is always worried that he may be replaced by a better poet. See, he has this anxiety in his mind that one day his chief will remove him and get another new scop or new poet. 
Dior's lament has a number of strophes. What is a strophe? A strophe is a group of lines forming sections of a lyric poem. Each strophe describes some or the other affected hero and it concludes with the refrain His sorrow passed away, so will mine. It is considered to be the perfect lyric of the Anglo-Saxon period. I am talking about Dior's Lament. Dior's Lament is considered to be the perfect lyric of the Anglo-Saxon period. What is a lyric? A lyric is a short poem that describes some personal feeling. So there are two other Anglo-Saxon poems that belong to this class. The Wife's Complaint and The Husband's Message. The next poem is The Seafarer. This poem has two parts. The first part talks about the difficulties of living as a seaman. Life lived on the sea is very difficult in extremely hostile conditions. But it also talks about the call of the sea, the attraction of the sea. That means there is a kind of magnetism, there is a kind of uh, attraction towards living on the sea, living on a ship, sailing on the oceans. The second part is an allegory and it describes the problems that are faced by seamen. And this is a kind of symbol which is used to refer to the difficulties in life. So, it speaks of the ocean's call and the ocean's call is actually a symbol of being uni united with God, being in unison with God. The fight at Finsburg. The fight at Finsburg was discovered in the wooden cover of a book of homilies. It is a splendid war song that depicts the battle fought by the Danish warrior Hanaf and his 60 men against Finn and his army. Hanaf's hall was attacked at midnight by Finn with fire and weapons. Hanaf and his men wake up and they fight for five days. But the outcome of the battle is unknown because what we have today is just a fragment of 50 lines. That is all we have today. The last important poem of this period is Waldair. Waldair provides a brief look at the story of Walter of Aquitaine and his bride Hildegund. They were held as hostages in Attila's court. Both of them escaped from there with a treasure. While they were crossing some mountains, they were attacked by Gunther and his men. And in this group is a man called Hagen who used to be one of Walder's former companions. Walder defeats all of them and escapes. This story was also written in Latin in the 10th century. And it is a part of the ancient German epic poem Nibelung Gilead. The Walder fragment is important because it demonstrates the fact that the people of England, that is the Anglo-Saxons, they were aware of the myths, the legends and the poetry of the other Germanic people. So with this, I conclude this video. Hope it has been helpful for all of you. I will be doing more videos on the history of English literature. Hope you will continue to watch them. Thank you.